Friends, it's good to see you again from Hammond Stadium in sunny Fort Myers, Florida. The Minnesota Twins continue their spring training efforts today as they take on the Toronto Blue Jays. Welcome inside Mall of America studio. I'm Audra Martin. Today is the first of 11 spring training games we'll be bringing you right here on Fox Sports North, all leading up to opening day on April 3rd, the official start of a new era in Minnesota Twins baseball. But first things first, it's more spring training action. It's the Twins and the Blue Jays coming your way next on Fox Sports North. Welcome back to CenturyLink Sports Complex. Here's today's starting lineups. Toronto Blue Jays managed by John Gibbons. Dalton Pompey will lead off. He'll be in center field. Ryan Golds at second base. He'll bat second. Kendris Morales made the trip with the H bat third. Justin Smoke at first base bats fourth. Daryl Ciciani will be in left field. He'll bat fifth. Anthony Alford in right field bat sixth. Richard Urena at shortstop bat seventh. Gregorio Petit will be at third base. And Juan Rotero will catch bat nine pitching. For Toronto here this afternoon will be Casey Lawrence. Here's a starting lineup for your Minnesota Twins. It'll be Byron Buxton leading off. Brian Dozier in the lineup at second base. He'll bat second. Joe Mauer's going to DH today. He'll bat third. Miguel Sano. He'll be at third base batting fourth. Max Kepler looking for his first hit of the spring. He'll be in right field batting fifth. Kenny Vargas at first base bat sixth. Jorge Polanco. Twin shortstop bat seventh. Jason Castro will catch bat eight. And J.B. Schuck will be the starting left fielder for the Twins. He'll bat nine pitching. Second outing of the Great Fruit League action will be right hander Irvin Santana. Umpires Joe Siddle will be calling balls and strikes. It'll be Jeff Kellogg at first base. Fielding Colbert at second base. Sam Holbrook, the umpire at third base. We're ready to play some baseball and get you started. Here's Corey Provis. All right, Danny, thank you and welcome back. Big news, as we mentioned on Wednesday, Danny is a first time grandfather. Mm, thank you, thank we you. We have him back in the booth, ready to go here today. Urban Santana's first pitch is a strike ball with that underway on his 
beautiful day in Fort Myers. The batter is Dalton Pompey. Switch hitting center fielder today. Triple A last year. OBP around 350. The Blue Jays organization. Santana misses inside. One ball and one strike. Urban Santana making his second spring training start. With two scoreless innings against Miami. We're back on February 27th. And the 1-1 shot to third. This is Simone fielding near his knee. And the score was in plenty of time to retire. Pompey for out of the one. Again, you go back to 2016. There wasn't much that went right for the Twins when you break down the pitchers, but the guy on the mound, he certainly was a great story last year. You know, he was, and I thought he played, he pitched very well at the latter part of the season here. ERA was good. It was just that, you know, poor defense playing behind him and all, again, lack of offense. So, you know, he's going to be the main horse of this club here, and he had, what, 30 starts last year, so expect that again this year. Ryan Goins. Utility player adding for Toronto. He has a good chance to be on the team. 77 games last year at 186. Devin Travis will be the everyday second baseman for the Blue Jays in the regular season. 1 0 is a strike call. And to kind of back up some of those numbers on Urban last year 30 starts, ERA solid. The fit, a uh, metric that we discussed often was comparable with his ERA in the low threes and the 1 1. He's on it inside, and he's facing a left-handed batter right now in Goins. And this was also a strength for Santana last year. Lefty's hit under 250. Off Urban a year ago, his career number's around 265. He was solid against lefties last year, the 2-1 inside. Fastball, 93 miles per hour, three balls, no strength. Toronto back-to-back -back trips to the American League Championship Series. Won 89 games last year. And the 3-1. Bouncing ball right side to Hopper Dozier. He gloves it about chin eye and flips over to Vargas. So two ground ball outs. And that was also a strength with Urban Santana last year's ground ball rate. Also rose a year ago. You know, and I think that there's also, I think you got to look at his leadership qualities that he has in that clubhouse. He, he demands it and he, he, he gets a lot of respect from a lot of the guys there. That's a great point because he certainly is that. Urban Santana is a leader. And after Urban is done today, he's going to join us from the Twins dugout. we we'll talk about 2017 a bit. Kendris Morales, a former twin, he cues one of the third base line and fair beat the shift. J.B. Shuck will get it back in. Morales, good to see him lead the division. The last two years with Kansas City, he just crushed the Twins. Time to time again. You know, and I'm looking at Morales, switch hitter. They lost Encarnacion, but I think that you're going to pick up the same offensive numbers. You hope to, right? Uh, yeah, with uh, with Morales over there, strictly a DH, and I think that that frees up a little bit uh, with what Toronto's trying to do, and that is, you know, they're they're in there. We've always talked highly of Toronto Blue Jays, and they always seem to find a way. Morales hit 30 home runs, second most he's hit in a year. 34 home run season many years ago with the Angels. He's at first two outs. Justin Smoke, speaking of first base, switch hitter takes down low, a change of pace from Mervin Ball one. Smoke had a poor second half. Pitch is 217 at 14 home runs. Yeah, the 1 0 pitch is lying shallow center field. That's going to drop for a hit. That's been charging. And he gets it back in towards short. So back to back two out singles from Morales and Smoke. This will be Daryl Cecilliani. Was in left field today. A left-handed batter. Was at AAA last year for the bulk of the season. Did have about 13 games or so with Toronto. With the Blue Jays, you look at their depth chart. Should be a very potent lineup once again. Jose Bautista re-signed. That was kind of unknown entering the offseason. Bautista back at a one-year deal. Josh Donaldson, MVP, terrific third baseman, also in this Blue Jay lineup. And we haven't even mentioned their starting staff, which is young and really, really good. Off speed down low in Cecilliani, ball one. Marcus Stroman, Aaron Sanchez, Marco Estrada, Jay Happ, and the 1-0 pitch is low and inside on Cecilliani, 2-0. Francisco Liriano. That's big starts for Toronto last year after being acquired from Pittsburgh. 
No score. Toronto batting two on, two out in the opening inning. And Santana's 2-0 pitch, fastball strike called. Belt high, 93 miles per hour, 2-1. and one. Both teams with dark uniform tops today. Twins once again rocking the reds. White pants, red cap, blue bill. Blue Jays, the dark blue top with gray trousers. Outfield shallow straight away. Wind is blowing in. And a pretty good clip right now from left field. And Santana's 2-1. Slider low and inside. A check swing. The appeal did not go. And now 3-1. Asked Irvin today in the clubhouse. You're going to throw everything? He said probably. Uh, he's throwing it right now. And uh, this guy started him off with a couple of change-ups and then spotted that fastball win off speed right there. See what he features here. Three balls and one strike. Hitters count. Sesliani, 10 home runs. Knocked in 40 runs. Triple-A last year as he bangs one foul. He got a fastball there. 95. Good velocity from Santana in this opening inning. Three and two. Irvin is not a member of the Dominican team. For the upcoming World Baseball Classic. Many of the guys that will play with Team Puerto Rico will leave here on Monday. And the payoff pitch, runners go. Ground ball weakly right side. Dozier to his left. He's got it between the knees and feeds Vargas to end the inning. Blue Jays don't score. Get a couple of hits and leave two. We played one half. In Fort Myers, Blue Jays nothing. And the twist coming up on your home. No score, bottom one. Twins have Byron Buxton, Brian Dozier, Joe Maurer due up. His young right-hander, Casey Lawrence. So young, Lawrence is 29 years old. Career minor leaguer. As he misses down low on Buxton, ball one. Byron so far, two out of nine. Here in the spring. A great month of September to wrap up his 2016 season. Lines one to third and caught on the line by Petit. Went down to his right. With his legs on the dirty spear that line drive away from Buxton. Solid contact and out nonetheless one away. Paul Molitor was speaking of Buxton's swing, Danny, recently and said maybe there seems to be a bit more pull when you look at Buxton's approach and his swing path couple of hits that he has both of them extra bases and right there it does look like just watching his at bat there he's got that leg kick and that to me is something that is really tough to master it's all about timing 
As Brian Dozier batting his third spring training game. And you remember Buxton went down to the minor leagues when he was sit down there and worked on some things and kind of just tried to simplify it. And I think it's just as carried over. I think it won on Brian Dozier after a 42 home run season. Let's see how he does in 2017. Knocked in 99 runs, scored over 100 runs, played great defense. And now the 1 1. Fastball had the plate miss low from Lawrence Ball 2. Lawrence last year 28 starts at double A and triple A. Had an ERA just over four. Not a big strikeout pitcher. Doesn't walk many. And the 2 1 on Dozier is swinging a high pop fly. The wind's going to play havoc with this one. Shallow left. In comes Cecilioni. Sunglasses on. He snags it. Round number two. And yeah, with that wind here, it is kind of gusted pretty good. And, you know, as, as before you start this ball game, outfield coach should remind all the outfielders, hey, guys, make sure you keep an eye on the wind and make sure you kind of don't give up on any balls. But it could be a little bit trouble for, for some of these guys. Twins played in a windy game yesterday in Clearwater. Against the Phillies had won 4-3 home runs from Danny Santana and Tommy Field. In that victory. Two down. Joe Maurer, his second spring training game. The other day, in fact, back here on Wednesday, Joe got hit by a pitch. He walked and struck out in his first Grapefruit League action. Joe DHing today. With Kenny Vargas at first base. A ball and no strikes. Lawrence from the windup. And the pitch swang and a miss. One and one. Looking at the Twins lineup today, Danny, a lot of familiar names and names we could see come opening day. Outside of left field right now, we may see this group out there against the Royals on April 3. And you might see them in this lineup order as well. Swing and a miss. One and two on Joe. Fastball down in the zone that time. And then I think maybe Mauer will probably play some first base, and then Vargas would, would DH. But I think where they're hitting, there has been talk about Mauer. Are they going to hit him in that third slot or not? One and two on Joe. No score in the first inning. Breaking ball down and inside. Two and two. Irvin Santana. Twins haven't officially announced it, but all sides point to Irvin being out there on opening day and have to think that Danny Duffy, a lefty, would do the same for Kansas City. Lawrence is a right-hander. With two outs. And the 2-2 ground ball gloved by the pitcher Lawrence off the first base out of the mound underhand flip to first and that's the inning twins go down one two three in the first after one no score on your home for twins baseball. No score after one. Toronto batting in the second. Anthony Alford 
Right handed batting right fielder. Behind a strike call, the fastball from Irvin Santana. Toronto picked up two hits in the first, did not score. Twins went down in order in their half of the opening inning. And the 0 1 slider low. One ball, one strike. Want to welcome all of those tuning in on Fox Sports North today. Our first simulcast. Also, those tuning in on the MLB network. We welcome you down here to Florida. And the 1 1 is inside. Ball two. The weather's been terrific. And the crowd today, by far the largest we've had at Hammond Stadium so far this spring. A lot of Toronto people yep. down here also in this Fort Myers area. So, a lot of Toronto blue in attendance. Righty to righty. And now the 2 1 pitch is swinging a fly ball into right. Shallow slicing foul. Kepler chasing and no plays. That ball finds the berm. 2 and 2. Uh, I know you enjoy always the Canadian national oh, anthem. I love it. One of the best. But if you ever had a chance to sing, hear Kent Herbeck sing it, it is a classic. Because Herbie do usually doesn't sing too often, but he gets fired up for that Canadian national anthem. And the 2 2 slider low on Alford. Full count. Richard Urena on deck, the shortstop. Then Gregorio Petit. Sure, Mr. Herbeck is listening today. Absolutely. And the 3 2. Strike three call. The fastball came back inside. At 94 miles per hour. First strikeout for Urban, who struck out roughly seven men per nine last year. Richard, you're one away. Pretty good location right there, and that's what he's trying to do with it. With that fastball and ran it in on him. No, Richard Urena, switch hitting shortstop. And a pitch on the way, line drive, base hit center field, right up the middle. Santana got the red glove up, trying to knock it down, but that was smoked right over Santana's head. And it's a one-out single for Urena. Well, the Twins open the 2017 regular season at Target Field against Kansas City. On Monday, April 3rd, the first 30,000 fans will receive a Twins long-sleeve hooded tee, courtesy of your local Northland Ford dealers. Go to TwinsBaseball.com to get your tickets for one of the best days in all of sports opening day on Monday April 3rd the first 30,000 fans received that twins long sleeve hooded tee courtesy of your local Northland Ford dealers Gregorio Petit with the Angels last year hit 245 in limited playing time Petit a non roster invite as Urena takes his lead. One out in the second. And the 1 0 pitch, a chopper wide of the third. Sano's got it. And he bobbles the ball a few times. And with that, everybody's safe. Sano reaching out to his left. Initially did glove it, but then never securely hung on to it as it was just moving around in the webbing of the leather. And then could now make a clean transition from his glove to his hand. So with that, everybody's safe. The Blue Jays have two on one out. Sano did a great job in just to get to that ball, but then the transfer trying to get it out of his glove just didn't get a handle on it. It's going to be ruled a hit all around, no error. Mm -hmm. uh, Sano. I just saw them flash a hit. I want to put that down in pencil. Yeah, I haven't even put it down yet. There's Juan Gratterall is catching today. He pulls a ground ball to third, should be two. Sano's got it to Dozier for one. The relay in time, double play. So, 5 4 3 and a fastball at 95. Gratterall hits into an inning ending double play. Blue Jays don't score a couple hits, they leave one. At home second, in four Myers, no score on your home for Twins baseball.
Twins and the Blue Jays on a beautiful Saturday. In Southwest Florida, good day to be out. If not at the ballpark today, then at the beach. And Yeltsin leads off the second. One for ten so far. In the Grapefruit League is Miguel with seven punch outs. Behind a strike call, the fastball from Lawrence. Nothing in one. And the 0 1 line foul to third. He's going to skip into the Twins' bullpen down the left field side. Hey, before we get too far along, great to see Jerry Howarth healthy and back where he belongs in the Blue Jays' broadcast booth. Now Jerry's one of our favorites. And the 0-2 is in the dirt ball one. Jerry underwent prostate cancer surgery over the winter. Thankfully caught it early. And Jerry looks great. And he is working today. And the 1-2 pitch. Bouncing ball. Fair inside first and down the right field line. Small playing nowhere near the line. And Sano, the slicing ground ball into right. Here's his second hit this spring. And the Twins have their first base runner today. No score in the second. Kind of shortened up there a little bit. Took his, the stride out of it and just used his upper body. And pretty good piece of hitting right there. Allowing that ball to kind of get deep and go the other way. Well, here is Kepler looking for his first hit so far. Max is 0 for 10. And nobody out. Kepler behind a strike called. Mentioned earlier how Twins lineup today could resemble what we see at opening day. I have to think that Max will be in right. After a 17 home run season last year, the 0 1 ground ball pulled fair past the diving smoke again into right. Sano chugging around second base. He'll make third. Kepler slides safely. It's a double. Ball coming back in, got between the legs of the catcher Grotterall, but the pitcher Lawrence backing up. And because of that, he saved a run. Still a double nonetheless for Kepler, so Sano is single. Kepler doubles. Twins are in business. Nobody out for Vargas. The Twins' offense should be a strength this season. A year ago, the Twins hit 200 home runs. It's the third time in franchise history they reached that number, first time since 64. And they had 11 players with at least 10, including Vargas right now, who had 10 a year ago. Infield back, and the pitch from Lawrence at the knees, and a strike called on a fastball, nothing in one. So sometimes the numbers really don't tell the whole story. You talked about 200 home home runs a team hit, and really haven't done much, but they still lose 103 ball games. Whereas this club here, the Toronto Blue Jays, you're talking about a team that strikes out a lot. Chopped to first, Smokes got this one. He gloves it in between his legs. This will score a run. Sonoma's in. Kepler to third. Vargas knocks in the run. And the Twins lead one to nothing with one out. Yeah, the Blue Jays, to your point, Danny, he struck out a ton last season. However, you can make up for that amount of strikeouts because they were top five in run score. They were third in home runs. They were third in on-base percentage. So, yeah, it's a, it's a big strikeout number. But with the Twins, for example, I wasn't surprised that the strikeout number was big. I thought it was going to be. But they can kind of work with that a little bit if they pick it up in other offensive areas. Yeah, and just the on-base percentage, but as a team, not really up there, so not a lot of opportunities. Strikeouts were really high, and when you have home runs like that, you are going to strike out some. All right, Polanco the batter. Blue Jays have the infield playing in. Polanco 3 for 11. He's homer knocked in five runs so far. Kepler at third, one out, and the 1-0 pitch is down on the inside corner. Well, speed that time somewhat there from Lawrence and it's an even count. And the Twins were near the bottom and on base percentage as a team last year bottom 10 in fact. In all of Major League Baseball just a 316 OBP last year the 1 1 is bounced foul that'll skip inside the Toronto dugout. About middle of the pack and runs scored throughout baseball. Same for walks drawn. Second half, the offense was better. Now, a lot of that can be attributed to the guy at second base. And what Dozier did the last four months of the season. 
And the one two on Polanco arches his back fastball is up and tight. Now two and two. Polanco a nice offensive season during his rookie campaign doesn't strike out all that often. 282 he's batting seventh here this afternoon from the stretch and the 2 2 pitch ground ball to second and with the infield playing in Kepler cannot score and Goins throws out Polanco. So Lawrence induces the weak ground ball. Now it's going to take a two out hit or a pass ball wild pitch to bring in Kepler. That's up to Jason Castro. Well, say goodbye to winter in Minnesota and report down here to the beautiful beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel. Experience Florida's most natural beaches and islands at FortMyersSanibel.com. Beach is no doubt packed today. Well, with two outs, here's Castro taking a pitch outside. Ball one. Now into March, have to think spring break has begun for many. And the 1 0 on Jason Castro is an off speed pitch from Lawrence. He's outside a change up 2 0. Castro batting eighth today looking over his career numbers he has hit eighth more than any other spot throughout his big league career and the 2 0 pitch same pitch and the same result change up outside ball three J.B. Shuck on deck if Castro can reach and prolong this inning. is outside a four pitch walk so Castro draws the walk and now it's up to JB Shuck two for 11 so far here in the spring JB with the White Sox last year 80 games be just over 200 he's in the mix for that fourth outfielder spot like Grossman and Stubbs. Danny Santana's in that conversation, of course. Zach Granite was minor league player of the year last year. Strike called on JV, a fastball at the knees, 0 1. You, know, you talk about those guys battling for that fourth, fifth spot there. Corey, all a little bit different. We didn't see JB Shuck that much, but when we did, we saw him in center field, and that's what they like about Shuck. And Santana, whereas Robbie Grossman, I guess, is not going to be able to play any center field, just a corner spot. It's half to the right side. Goins charging, gloving from his glove directly under and tossed to first in time, ends the inning. The Twins do score one run on a couple hits while leaving two and after two. It now reads Twins one, Toronto nothing from Ford Myers. This is Twins baseball. Toyota. Tested, trusted Toyota. Toyota. Let's go places. Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. For powerful calls.
Spring Training Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by Quick Trip. Big on fresh, low on price. Like Fox Sports North on Facebook and stay connected with the state of hockey. Twins on top, one to nothing. A Kenny Vargas. RBI ground out, producing the game's first run. Urban Santana. Second time through now against Toronto's lineup. It'll be Pompey, Goins, and then Kendris Morales. Blue Jays no runs on four hits so far today. And there's a bunt. And it's going to be fielded by Castro Fair right in front of home plate. And he makes that play easily on Pompey. And that is out number one. Joined now by a special guest. Karen Feldman is the food columnist from the Florida Weekly publication down here. And Karen is kind enough to join us here in the booth. Karen, nice to see you again. Thanks for joining nice us. Nice to see you too. Thanks. It's uh, that time of year. And I mentioned the beaches are going to be popular now. Spring break for many has begun and will begin here shortly. So folks will be making their way down here to southwest Florida. The pitch is down and away. Ball one on the batter, Ryan Goins. Specialty has to be seafood, right, Karen, this time of year? Oh, yeah. It's specialty all year long, but now you can eat it in your flip-flops and your shorts outside. When it's 76 degrees today. Did, did we mention that? It's, it's perfect, isn't it? Degrees. This is nice. So you can dine outside, and there's a lot of places, if you have a dog, that you can do take your dog to the uh, outside dining and both of you can sit outside and eat grouper are one of our specialties right now uh, stone crabs are in season as well big fat meaty uh, crab claws that you don't have to work too hard to eat they're really good dipped in butter mm. And or the mustard sauce. The mustard sauce. Or the sauce mustard sauce. Really yeah, good. you can't. No, you can't take anything away from the mustard sauce. It's good too. You're right. <laughs> Two one is outside. Ball three. You know, I've been coming down here now six years, Karen. But what I there are there is some fine dining down here. But would you say the bulk of the restaurants are rather casual? You mentioned flip flops and shorts and a t-shirt. That really caters well yes, down here, right? Absolutely. Even most of the nicer restaurants, you can go with. I, you know, I might wear shoes if I was going to one of the better ones, but shorts and and regular sh a basic casual shirt is just fine. You don't know, don't bring a suit when you come down here to eat. I bring that up because people might be packing and what to wear when mm -hmm. they go out for dinner down here and th it's it's casual down here. Yeah, yes. sundress is nice. Um, shorts are are fine in almost every place, and you can still eat some really really fine foods. Ryan Goins walked, so he's out at first. Here is Morales at a single down the third base line his first time up. Kendris, 33 years old, and he's behind a strike call. Don't want to want Danny. Karen, w w when you write about these restaurants, do you contact the restaurant and let them know you're coming in, or is it just kind of Absolutely on not. <laughs> so you do not want them <laughs> incognito, um, right? I want to get treated the way every other customer gets treated, and that's the only way, really, you can tell how a restaurant operates. So we go in, um, I usually use my husband's last name because it's not the same as mine when I make a reservation, so they don't necessarily know we're coming. And um, we eat like everyone else, and then I write about it. But then you're trying to uh, taste as much as you can on that menu. Right, yes, appetizers, entrees, desserts. Uh, when we can, we bring other couples with us so we can get double the number of things to eat, and I taste everything. And I'm it sure is they, a tough job. Oh, it's a fun <laughs> job. Somebody's got to do it. Most of the time it's fun. If it's not a good restaurant, it's not so much fun. But, yes, it is a fun job. I love it. Two I balls think. and a strike on Morales. Runner at first base, one out. Ground ball right side and pass Dozier into right center. A base hit. Goins hustling around second base. He'll test Kepler's arm to third. He's going to make it sliding. Go back to first base, and Morales is saved. He came off the bag as Kendris was lunging for first. And Vargas, if he kept the tag on, Morales... He would have been out. But Kendris was kind of sprinting back and lunging back towards first, and he is still safe. And the Blue Jays have runners at the corner, still one out. That'll bring up Justin Smoke. Twins lead one to nothing here in the Toronto third. Visiting with Karen Feldman, food columnist from the Florida Weekly. What's new? The restaurant scene. We, we keep mentioning seafood's always going to be the go-to down here. Are restaurants going in a different direction with what they offer, when they offer, how often they offer food now in 2017? 
We're getting a lot more variety. Uh, I, I'd say uh, seafood's going to, is popular, always has been popular. We have some really good new restaurants that are, are offering seafood. The, one of my favorites is Fishtail Grill over in Cape Coral. It's attached to a seafood market where the fishermen deliver the fish right through the back door so mm. you know you're getting really fresh fit local fish which is is great and the, and they do a really nice job on it lots of great shrimp from our shrimp fleets at uh salty papas pinchers a lot of the local uh places have really terrific local local seafood um we're getting a lot more ethnic restaurants we have good greek we have good uh mediterranean and um we've finally gotten a really good chinese restaurant Hallelujah, Ginger Bistro. <laughs> Authentic New York style. I'm, I'm, I'm in heaven. Um, we have good Thai, lots of sushi. Uh, sushi on every corner. Um, so a lot more variety than we used to have, um, which is, is nice if when you come down here, if you, want, you don't want to just eat. You know, you can, eat your, you can eat your hot dog here, and then you can go out and get something good. Spring training time. Do you ever do the ballpark's food and taste there and write you about know, I, that? I haven't done it this year. I did it a couple years back, and it was pretty good. I was uh, pleasantly surprised because I had done it about 15 years ago, and then I did it a couple years ago, and things have gotten much better. Although I, I haven't tried a, a beer shake yet. No beer shakes. Mm, that sounds tasty right now. Yeah, yeah, well. No. <laughs> no? No, not no. for me. Not for me. But, yes, the, it's pretty good now. Justin Smoke is the batter, three and two. Blue Jays have runners at the corners, one out. Twins lead one to nothing. Raul Fernandez is warming in the Twins' bullpen. Santana's payoff pitch on the way. Hit foul off the hands of Smoke near the Toronto dugout. Do you have a favorite seafood restaurant? Can you say, or is this not a lot with your, with your job and your title? Do you have a number one seat, if you will, for seafood? That, that fishtail grill is really okay. my favorite because I know, I've seen the, the fishermen come in to the seafood market that's right next door, that, and they own both. And so you know that what you're getting has, has been swimming around in the Gulf that morning. So 3 2 ground ball right side. Dozier's got it. Flips the second for one. Polanco's relay in time. Double play. Ends the inning right there. 4 6 3 double play. And the Blue Jays do not score and they leave one. Karen, thank you very much. How can folks find you and, your, and all your columns? You can go to FloridaWeekly.com and I believe you can just search my name. You Wonderful. should be able to find it there. Karen, thanks for your time. Always thanks. appreciate it's it. Good Karen Kelman joining us. We are through two and a half. Still lead. Twins do one to nothing on your home for Twins Baseball. Twins lead one to nothing. Blue Jays have left four on after three. And Byron Buxton bats second time through for the Twins facing right-hander Casey Lawrence. 
And Byron takes the pitch down and inside. Ball one. Buxton hit the ball hard his first time up. Lined out to the third baseman, Petit. He shows Bunt, lays it down sharply. First base line. Smokes got it, and he'll tag out Buxton. Right on the front of his Red Twins jersey. It's round number one. Love the idea, though, Danny. Something maybe we need to, see, need to see more of this season. Buxton attempting to get that ball down via the bunt. Yeah, I, I, that's and this is the best place to try it out here in spring training. And I liked it right there. Usually a right-hander pitcher falling off the first base side. You don't see too many guys right-handed try to push it that way. But with his speed, I don't think it matters for Buxton. Whereas a left-hander is going to fall off the third base. Now he's about two steps late and trying to react to that push bunt. As Dozier batting taking down low ball one you go back to that bunt there if that balls to smokes right another foot mm -hmm. maybe two feet then Buxton's going to be safe I mean just the foot race won't even be close it, it's just a matter of location of putting that bunt down popped up foul souvenir back behind the plate one and one on Dozier now Irvin Santana likely done for the day in fact he is and he joins us now from the twins dugout Irvin two starts in are you getting done what you want I mean put the numbers aside goals you set for yourself this early in camp yes uh, we catch our working in and then uh, we get in there you know we're close what specifically do you work on in spring training after all these years has that changed is there a certain pitch or two that you really put more of an emphasis on what well, I think I uh, was working today mostly in change-ups especially righty and lefties did you throw that enough to righties last year or was that simply a pitch you'll use to left-handed batters uh, I throw a lot of to righties uh, uh, depends on situations so uh, I used a lot last year two and two on Brian Dozier twins lead one nothing in the bottom half of the third inning and Lawrence deals and he misses high on Brian a fastball three and two Jason Castro caught you today how's that relationship going between you and your new catcher it's good it's good I like it I like the way it's set up in the on the home play and I like the way he he called the pitches we almost in the same page breaking ball check swing in the dirt Dozier did not chase it it's a walk and Dozier's on with one out here in the third that'll bring up Mauer Herbert Danny glad here we talked to Trevor May last week and Trevor was talking about He's going to get a legitimate chance to be a starter here, but he talked about the vibe with the starters from what happened last year to the, the early, uh, what we're seeing early here in spring training. Do you sense it as well? Yeah, a little bit. You know, um, uh, I think we're doing a better job this year than we did last year. You know, we were working in more things this year. And uh, you can see the difference. You know, everybody's going by the business and uh, they're doing a good job. Dozier runs, pitches the ball, throw to second base, not in time. Stolen base, Brian Dozier, who swept 18 last year. So Dozier puts himself in scoring position with Maurer batting. The ball and no strikes. And that's something that Paul Molitor has talked about. There are certain guys on this club, you're going to see them run a little bit more. He wants to see them kind of run and and run early in the count. I think that'll be something huge for the Twins. So Maurer steps in. Joe bounced out his first time up. Irvin Santana joining us from the Twins dugout. As Joe looks at a knee-high strike called. Hey, a couple of rules changes that I'm curious to get your take on being that you're a veteran. Number one, do you, do you mind how intentional walks now work? They don't get, get to throw four anymore and just a, a signals made from the dugout. Is that a big deal for you? I like it. I like the new idea, you know, because uh, every time we, we do the four pitch walk, they, uh, those pitch count for us. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> you, are throw, yeah. you are pitching those yeah. four pitches. So now they take it off. It's better for us. Would you be for a pitch clock that, that is in the minor leagues? Would you be for that at the big league level? If they if they do it in the minor leagues, they they're gonna bring it to the big leagues. You think so? You think yeah. it's inevitable that, yeah. that it'll, it'll be up here? Yeah, I think so. You know, they're starting with a clock down there, and now they we have it right here. So you know, probably it's coming. The ball and two strikes on Maurer, one out, and Joe swings and misses on a breaking ball in the dirt, picked up by the catcher Grutterall, and he completes the play by throwing out Joe. Two outs. Pace of play, Urban, is such a big topic of conversation for those in the game, for those who follow the game and cover the game. What what would you suggest? Is that something you're even concerned about being a pitcher, pace of play, and things that you could do to improve pace? Well, uh, to me, I don't really play attention to that. You know, I'm just trying to work fast for me and for my teammates behind me. So because they like the 
adrenaline going and not take too long between pitches. So that's that's me. So I don't know what the other pitchers they're thinking about it, you know. Miguel Sado bats. Miguel singled and scored. Back in the second inning. Dozier at second base. Now two outs. Twins one. Blue Jays nothing. In the third inning, in the dirt. That one blocked by the catcher. Ball one. The World Baseball Classic begins here shortly. Were you interested in, in pitching for the uh, Dominican team? Uh, no, not really. You know, uh, for the for the beginning of the this year, I was like, I'm not gonna pitch. You know, I just trying to focus and and do a better job this year in the first half, and uh, hey, that's my goal. Which is outside, two balls and no strikes. And your season last year was just magnificent. Kind of lost in what the team and how the team played last year. But did you take a moment to to look at your numbers? Were you pleased with your season individually last year? Well, I was happy with my, my my season last year. Other than that, I mean, we don't do a good job uh, uh, winning games, but that's the more important thing for me. I mean, I deserve better. I want better the win. Everybody wins again. game, everybody happy, then uh, only me have a good year, you know. So I don't I don't like that. Let's see if Sonoma gets the green light here at 3 0. He does swing and towers one to center field. This is deep. This is way back and way gone. Off the concourse in left center field. Green light, you bet for Miguel Sano. Two for two. He has scored twice. His first homer of the spring, and the Twins lead 3 0. Herb, did you get the sense? 3 0 green light right there was coming for Miguel. I know. I know it was coming. He was, the, the good thing is that he was ready for that. You know, and, and as a veteran player like yourself, when you get in those situations, you know who the guys are and aren't that maybe would be swinging or not, and maybe you don't just give them the cookie? Yes. <laughs> you, know, you, have, you have to know which which guys are swinging on those two trios counts. So um, it's tough. It's very tough, especially when you're behind the count so many times and you're trying to throw strikes. So that's difficult. Here is Kepler batting. He had to double his last time up. His first hit this spring. Pitch is low. Irvin, I wanted to ask you about uh, Barrios in camp this year. He seems a little bit different here. He's always a good worker, but are you spending any extra time with him a little bit and talking to him? Uh, the time I spend with him was uh, every time we play playing catch, he's my partner mm -hmm. playing catch, and uh, I just try to, uh, every time he do something wrong, I just try to tell him the what's going on with the, the arm action and all that so especially when he throws sliders or change up he 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 looks much better now two balls and a strike on max with two outs pitches high ball three the talent though is there Irvin you've had a lot of teammates different teams over the years is, is Barrios different his skill set is that pretty different pretty unique yeah you know he had the funky mechanics that fools everybody you know and then he the arm action that he has is like tremendous. You know, you can barely see the ball when it's coming out at his hands. Which is fouled back three and two on Kepler. Twins have scored twice in the inning and lead three zip. Twins at three, four, and one in the Grapefruit League. Toronto two, five, and one. Lawrence from the windup and the payoff pitch ripped to right on a line. That one's going to sail over the head of Alfred and find the wall. Kepler two for two, two doubles. So Sano was quiet before today. He has two hits. Kepler was quiet as well. He has two hits. Let's see if Vargas keeps it going. Toronto has activity in the bullpen. Beg your pardon. There's a new pitcher out there for the Blue Jays. This is not Lawrence. This is Mike Bolsinger. Beg your pardon. We missed that change to begin this inning. Mike Bolsinger is the pitcher now for Toronto. As the Twins are still batting here in the third inning. Kenny Vargas with an RBI ground out. His first time up here today. Does spring training, Irvin, feel even longer this year with the WBC? Does it feel like it's just going to be another week or so longer down here? No, to me, it's feel the same, you know. Uh, I mean, I think we take it every day, one at a time, and uh, we just go come here every morning and try to do our things, you know, and not, with, not think about if it's going to be longer or not. Irvin, you seem to be one of the guys that kind of enjoy spring training down here and come to the ballpark, and there's so many things to do around the Fort Myers area. Yeah, you know, uh, it's not, not much to do in Fort Myers, you know, but... Uh, mm -hmm. 
I have my family here, and then we, they always go to the pool and all that. So I just, you know, I just come here every morning and get ready for the, for the game or for the, for the day, what we have to do. Put your eye on Vargas, two balls and no strikes. Twins three, Blue Jays nothing in the third. Kepler at second base. Well, Vargas in the mix to be on the team to start the year as Bolsinger misses high, 3 0. Mauer and Young Ho Park and Kenny Vargas, who does have a rare fourth option available. Kenny is number 19 red tops. Moves that bat back and forth and now pumps it above his left shoulder. And the 3 0 is outside a walk. Second walk this inning issued by Bolsinger. And there are two on. And here comes Pete Walker, the pitching coach for the Blue Jays, to check out his pitcher right now, Bolsinger. I Irvin, if the Twins are going to be better in 2017, how much of that is based on you, and not just you individually, but pitchers as a whole performing better and kind of leading the way for a better season overall for the team this summer? I think it's uh, our our job, pitchers' job, to to get better this year because last year was a, it was a that good. And uh, we, I think we, we should do better this year because the, all the guys have more experience. And, uh, and I think we, we will do better this year. Hey, Irv, we're going to let you go with that. Take a quick time out. But thanks for your time, as always. And we'll chat more along the way, okay? Thank you. All right, Irvin Santana, we thank him for his time. Twins are still batting. Have two in, have two on, and two out. We're back for the home third in a moment on your home for Twins Baseball. Blue Jays make a pitching change, and it's a left-hander. Non-roster invite here into camp, Tim Meza. So Mike Bolsinger is out. And the new pitcher is Tim Meza. On to work here for Toronto. Twins have two in, two on, two out, leading 3 nothing. And Jorge Polanco. Turn around and bat right-handed for the first time. Thanks to Irvin Santana. Always great to catch up with Irvin. Again, he will likely be on the mound opening day on April 3rd at home against Kansas City. Polanco facing left-handers last year hit 309. That's the scenario he's in right now with two on and two out as Mesa misses down and inside ball one. Boy, Santana's second half in particular 14 starts ERA in the mid twos opponents hit just 220 against him. Mesa from the stretch the high leg kick and the 1 0 on Polanco was flared near second base Goins charging and catching shoulder high and with that the inning is over but the Twins add two on a booming home run from Miguel Sano and after three it now reads Twins three Blue Jays nothing on your home for Twins Baseball.
Spring Training Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by Explore Minnesota. Big things are happening. Don't miss a second. Only in Minnesota. The Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500, Sunday at 2 Eastern on Fox. This portion of Twins Baseball is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. See your local Chevy dealer or log on to ChevyDealer.com today. Beautiful day in Fort Myers after three. Twins lead 3-0. Urban Santana is done. Twins have a new pitcher. For more on him. And for the next three, here he is, the brand new grandfather, Papa Dazzle, Danny Glad. Oh, thank you, Corey. Good afternoon, everybody. New pitchers for the Twins will be Ryan Vogelson. Vogelson last year with Pittsburgh. He had 14 starts. He was at 24 ball games. Non roster invitee into camp. Has experience and also a couple World Series rings. So he's a veteran guy out here. He knows what he's doing. Age 39. So a long shot. I wouldn't say a long shot, but most likely Vogelson been a starter in his career. Has a good chance. He could be pitching out of the Twins bullpen to be that long guy. Strike one in there. And right back, a little off speed pitch and catches the inside corner. Cesliani is the batter. He grounded out his first time up, so quickly no balls and two strikes. Vogelson has pitched inning in two thirds. This is his third appearance. And a righty delivers. Slider in the dirt. Cesliani had to dance out of the way of that one, so. But Vogelson, he's got some big league time and said with the Giants, he's been with Pittsburgh a couple of times. Really did well with the Giants going to the World Series. As the righty delivers, there's a line drive, one hopper off the glove of Polanco. Polanco kind of a step to his right, tried to go down on one knee and backhand it. Got glove on it, knocked it down. Most likely to go as a base hit. The talk with. Polanco at shortstop isn't so much his glove, but more or less the errors he's been charged with down here. Grapefruit League action with the throwing. Twins have a chance to turn a double play. They've already turned one here this afternoon. And a pitch. Big swing and a miss. Alford, the right fielder. He went out, struck out looking his first time up. You see if Cesliani would try to run here you've got Castro behind the plate test his arm short lead not running the pitch there's a strike high strike called by the home plate umpire so no balls and two strikes Alfred last year in a ball was in 92 ball games hit nine home runs drove in 44. Woods double play depth. Outfield shallow. And this ball's well stroked. Left center field. Long run. Shock still tracking. Still tracking. And reaches up. Makes the catch on the warning track. Throw back to first base. Not in time. Boy, nice play. J.B. Shock out there in left field. Did not give up on it. Said they were playing shallow. Boy, he reached up right on the warning track. No balls, two strikes. And he gave that ball a ride. Good route and just one step on the warning track. Good play. Now you mentioned last year we saw J.B. Shuck a lot with the White Sox play center field. Austin Jackson was out. They decided to keep Adam Eaton in the right field and it was Shuck seeing a lot of time in center. You know when you go in and you see a player for maybe three games maybe a four game series you don't really get a good feel for what they do on an everyday basis and we've got an opportunity to see Shuck out here with the twins at spring training and I'm a little surprised I did not think he was that quick and he is good base runner not a lot of stolen bases but he does get down the line well and Vogelson delivers a strike in there Reina the shortstop so no, even with a bag at third now he'll come in step on the grass.
Sesliani, the runner at first base, reached on a single. Checks the runner, delivers a slider down and in. That's a breaking ball there. I'm not sure if Vogelson's trying to throw it for a strike, more trying to get the left-handed hitters to chase it, throws it down around the back ankle. Said Vogelson, guy has big league time. He's got 10 years in the big leagues, and that explains a non-roster guy coming to camp why he gets a good number. Checks the runner at first. And a pitch. Fouled off. Tardy swing. And not just that, he numbered that. A cherished number. And well, and the Twins, Twins tradition. Sure. But Troy Hawkins. Dave Winfield wore that number. Aaron Hicks wore that number. Aaron Hicks got to wear that number. A certain Cupertino kid wore that number. Mm. And Vogelson, he's had it over his years as well. He's, you know, you get to a certain point in your career, the numbers kind of, it might mean something to you. Ball to dirt, nice stop there by Castro. And now, uh, counted two balls and two strikes. I think it's more important, you know, you guys buy a lot of jewelry for their wives sometimes and they'll have that those pendants that with their their number on it you know, some people even get a tattoo with Vogel's on and then all of a sudden you go to a new club and you got to give up all the jewelry three to nothing Minnesota we're in the top of the fourth inning and the pitch runs a fastball up and in and now three balls and two strikes Ryan Vogelson came up with the Giants and I was a roving instructor with the Giants I believe it was in 2000 and we would go down to Bakersfield we had two clubs there Bakersfield and San Jose both Giants team pitched down and in and it's a walk runner is off and going so Vogelson a little trouble now first and second one out and Robbie Thompson, myself, and Dave Rigetti were the rovers. Rigetti was the roving instructor pitching. Robbie did the infield, and I did the outfield base running. And we would take a lot of the position players out. And Ryan Vogelson didn't like to run with the pitchers. He liked to come and hang out with the hitters and, and talk and listen to the hitters. So he'd get a good idea as to how to get some of these guys out. But good, good kid. You knew he was going to make it. Good athlete. He needs a ground ball double play here. Gregorio is going to bat first and second. Right, he delivers. Runs it up and in. There's a strike. Keep hearing about Castro and how well he frames balls and gets some calls to go the pitcher's way when maybe they're kind of borderline strikes. And talking to him, he said he started to do that a couple of years ago. So, curve didn't get that one called. A little breaking ball, good pitch there by Vogelson just off the plate. Toronto out hitting Minnesota today. They have six hits, Twins just four, but a couple of doubles, home run by Sano. And a right, he delivers. Line drive left field. JB Shockey, he'll track this one down. That one going to his right, so two down. Well stroked. Grotel will bat. Number nine hitter. Hit into that 5 4 3 double play back in the second inning. So first and second, two down. Off speed down and away, out of the zone. Boy, with this wind blowing, and it does look like it's blowing down the left field line. Just watching Buxton and Kepler and J.B. Shuck. Shuck probably the deepest out of all of them. And didn't get the call there. Nice location down and away. But Buxton confident in being able to go back on balls. We saw that last year. Kepler 
Very good at coming in on balls. Dangerous count, 2-0. Ground ball crisply hit past a diving Sano down the left field line. That'll get one in. Shuck comes in, holds that runner at third base. So Toronto pulls a double down the left field line there on the board. So now second and third time run at second base time for the order for Pompey. The Blue Jays have made solid contact this half inning. J.B. Shuck made the great catch and Alford's drive of the wall earlier this inning. Even Petit squared up the ball he hit. That was caught by J.B. a moment ago and this one Sano could not stop. Pulled to his right. And without the Blue Jays have their first run. You know and, and two down like that I, I look down there and Sano playing pretty shallow at third base and Base the battery really not a bunter with two strikes on it. There's a strike call. Pompey for two trying to bunt his last time up. Bunted it right off a home plate. Good play by Castro. And Vogelson change up weakly hit down the first baseline. That's going to trickle foul. Let's pause 10 seconds. We'll allow our stations to identify themselves. You're listening to Twins Baseball. CenturyLink Sports Complex. Twins taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. Toronto. Been up in Dunedin for a long time since 1977. Boy, that was one of the road trips we love to make. They put some money into their ballpark. And another tapper foul. Forty first year in Dunedin for the Toronto Blue Jays. They get to play the Canadian World Baseball Classic team. They'll play that March 7th at home. Two down, second and third. Three to one, Minnesota. Little jam shot popped up. Vargas, Dozier both fighting the sun, and it's going to be Vargas calling for it and puts it away. So Vogelson gives up one on two hits. He strands two after three and a half. New score here at CenturyLink Sports Complex. Twins three. And the Toronto Blue Jays won. You're listening to Twins Baseball. Well, leading off for the Twins be the number eight hitter Jason Castro. Castro walked his first time up. Played in four ball games. He is now two for nine. 
And Grapefruit League action. He'll bat here as lefty still in there. Meza, and he delivers, and this one's lifted down the left field line. Well, foul. Most likely Castro going to bat somewhere in the bottom part of the order and that's where he's been when he was with the Houston Astros just 29 years of age. Does live in Houston. Lefty on lefty matchup and a pitch missed up and away one ball one strike. Fastball clocked at 95. Straight up in the batter's box. And a 1 1 inside. Two balls in one strike. Castro doesn't hit much for an average. Missed inside. Good fastball, but and now three ball, one strike count. Last year just hit 210 was in 113 ball games before that 2015 just hit 211 but he's going to probably play in around that 100 110 15 game range and 3 1 pitch has popped up third base side shortstop coming in and now it's going to be the third baseman he'll call him off and take it so Castro pops up there's out number one. And here's J.B. Shuck. Nice defensive plays in this ball game. So one out base is empty. Three to one Minnesota. And foul straight back. Good cut. Twins got a run in the second inning leadoff single by Sano his first hit second hit of the spring Kepler hit a double and then a ground out by Kenny Vargas picked up an RBI and then a two run homer by Miguel Sano in the third inning it was two down three balls and no strikes he went left center field with a big booming home run pitch down and away so one ball one strike You look at J.B. Shuck, and he'll probably be that fourth, fifth outfielder. He can play some defense, so late in the ball game. And this one's popped up left side, and that's going to trickle into the Twins bullpen. And one of the pitchers running around trying to catch it. And had trouble with the wind there. That had to have been a left-hander. I'm not even going to venture as to who it was. I got to think it's, did you see who it was? O'Rourke? O'Rourke's a good guess. Uh, I did not. I you got a slick around, so no jersey. Well, he's going to turn around. Of course it is. Only a lefty would do that. Yep, that is Ryan O'Rourke. Great call, yeah. Mr. Glad. Man. Sure is. And shock little two hopper to the shortstop has to hurry, and he's in time. <laughs> JV just kind of put the ball in play and had to hustle down the line, but he'll be out number two. Just looking at, at, at J.B. Shuck's numbers over his career, he's never been a, a, a base dealer in the big leagues. So, you know, you talk about he, he runs well, plays a defensive position in center field and, and left field. But you look at his stolen bases, not a lot of them at the major league level. We've got a break in the action, so that's going to be it with two down bases empty. We have a pitching change. We'll be back. And you're listening to Twins Baseball.
two down bases empty. The pitcher going to be right hander Dominic Leone. Leone last year with Triple A Reno and Arizona. It's in 24 ball games for the Arizona Diamondbacks. In camp here with the Toronto Blue Jays. Everything out of the bullpen. ERA rather high. And he'll be facing Byron Buxton. Buxton tried to bunt his last time up. Pushed it down the right side. And here, base is loaded. You could either try it again, but he's got home run power, double power. But any way he can get on, he can steal a base. Pops it up right behind home plate. That's a souvenir. Appreciate John Gordon stopping by the booth today. Seeing more of John Gordon now and here at the ballpark. Brought a group. He'll be here on Wednesday night. Twins take on Team USA. 7.05 start down here. A little cutter down and away. One ball, one strike. Yeah, that'll be fun. Simulcast again on Wednesday. Yeah. Team USA, WBC, a good team. Yes, so we'll be on hand to see the Twins. Bumgarner, Kershaw, starters on that team. Ground ball, weakly hit. Better hurry, though. On the run as the shortstop comes up throwing, and he throws it away. He hurried it, and he threw it away. So Buxton, I believe that ball might have went in the dugout. He's going to be awarded second base. That's what speed does. Big, long swing, but Buxton so quick getting out of the box. So I believe it's going to be an error. Yeah, the Twins take advantage of this. Dozier is going to bat an opportunity. Dozier one for six. Grapefruit League action. Like Maurer didn't start right away. This is just Dozier's third game. Maurer in the on deck circle. This is just Maurer's second game. And a righty delivers. Missed outside. Uh, Bumgarner and Kershaw not on the roster. Mm. Uh, Chris Archer among starters. Danny Duffy is on the roster. Marcus Stroman from the Blue Jays. He's on the Team USA roster amongst starters. All right, he comes set and then steps off, keeping an eye on Buxton at second. Tanner Roark, Washington Nationals, also on that team. Sonny Gray is not. We mentioned his name the other yep. day. He had to be pulled off the roster. Well, there wasn't an insurance right. or something. All right, he delivers. Got the plate below. Two balls, no strikes. Sonny Gray was going to pitch on it, but if there was an injury, then the insurance wouldn't pick up or pay him. And I was reading something else that there's like a taxi squad. If they can go to that second round, then they can maybe pick up another player at that point. I've heard players say, Maybe if they get to the second round. Ground ball up the middle. Fielded behind second base. Nice play there by the shortstop to retire Dozier. Twitch threatened. Strand one. We're going to the top of the sixth inning. Top of the fifth inning. We'll be back. Twins lead up three to one on your home for Twins baseball.
in Minnesota as we start the top half of the fifth inning. Toronto with seven hits, Twins four hit. Each team charged with an error today. It'll be hitters two, three, and four. Ryan Gones will lead off, then followed by Kendris Morales, Justin Smoke. Vogelson still out there as Goins shows bunt, pulls it back, but it doesn't matter. It's in there. Strike one. A couple of new additions by the Toronto Blue Jays. They've added a ton of players, but Kendris Morales, probably the big name, and also Steve Pierce, good utility player. And a pitch misses inside, evens it up one ball, one strike. Mike Bolsinger, who pitched earlier in this ball game, is there. Alfred in the lineup. He's also a new player on this Toronto ball club. J.P. Howell, left-handed pitcher, kind of a specialist guy with the Dodgers. Pitch up and away now with the Toronto Blue Jays, but gone. They've Ben Waugh's gone. Brent Cecil's gone. Good buddy. Uh, Chris Colabello. I believe he's with the Cleveland Indians now. And Edwin Encarnacion gone. Signed with the Cleveland Indians. Vogelsang's 2-1 pitch. On a corner for a strike. He evens it up two balls and two strikes. Junior Navarro gone. Scott Feldman gone. So they've kind of reloaded a little bit. And I'm sure that they're going to be competitive their fan base in Toronto has really turned around pitch down and in again there's that slider a little breaking ball trying to get him to chase a lot of Toronto fans here in attendance a lot of blue shirts a lot of jerseys <laughs> taking in a nice ball game here today count of three balls two strikes and Ryan to right, he delivers. Swung on a foul straight back. Yeah, when the baseball schedule comes out, I always look to see when the Blue Jays will be at Target Field because that is one of the better atmospheres we see all season long. And Toronto, a great fan base. And boy, they travel. And they'll be at Target Field for a four game series in mid September. And a pitch. Crisply hit to the shortstop. Fielded cleanly by Polanco. And a ball in the dirt picked out by Vargas. There you go. Another low throw by Jorge Polanco, but had help over there by Vargas picking it out of the dirt. One out. You know, it used to be the rivalries where you would see the fan base come from another city. It used to be Milwaukee, where the Milwaukee Brewer fans would come over more so in the, in the Metrodome, but a little bit it's kind of cooled. But then also more so the Twins fans going over to Miller Park playing on taking on the Milwaukee Brewers there that is kind of tempered a little bit two game home and home with Milwaukee yeah, and again this do year. It, won't it? yeah Monday through Thursday in August Morales batch soft speed pitch low ball one chance that there could be a weekend series next year interleague partner for the National League or I should say the AL Central will be the NL Central in 2018 so we could see that happen again like we did a couple years ago three game weekend series at both Miller Park and Target Field Big swing and foul ball. Good cut there by Morales. He has two hits. Twins have some fun interleague travel though this season. At the Giants, at San Diego, Dodger Stadium is always special. So some fun interleague trips for the Twins this year. On that West Coast, I mean, it's always fun out there. And even, you know, that Seattle, way up there in Seattle and Anaheim, that whole, whole area out there is fun. Pitch missed inside. Have an off day in San Diego this year, off day in San Francisco this year. Nice. Get in trouble. You're going to go to the zoo? San Diego has a great zoo. Yeah. Great zoo. And this one missed on a 2 2 1 pitch or 2 1 pitch, now 3 and 1. Milk and cookies, well known for milk and cookies oh, out boy. there in the uh, Bay Area. You can always find it, can't you? <laughs> Big swing to miss on a 3-1 pitch. And now full count, three balls and two strikes. You know, and I leave in the morning and go out for my morning exercise. I always go by, you know, I, we are always on the same floor, but you've got that little tray from the night before room service, and you can see your, your glass of milk and a little saucer with the cookies, a few crumbs there, and sure enough, Boy, Provis had his milk and cookies last night. It's good at 10 o'clock. It's good at 
12 o'clock. It's good at 4 a.m. It's good at 6 a.m. It's good at happy hour. Great at happy hour. Mm -hmm. Morales still batting. Three balls, two strikes. Vogelson delivers ground ball shortstop. Fielded by Polanco. They had the shift on him. And that throw in time. And gets Morales. Here's out number two. There's Justin Smoke. And sure enough, Paul Molitor is going to pop out of the dugout. We're seeing this more and more as to two down bases empty. So Vogelson will leave. And we have a left hander coming to the ball game for the Minnesota Twins up. Three to one here in the top of the fifth inning. We'll be back. You're listening to Twins Baseball. Breslow on for the Minnesota Twins. A lot of talk about Breslow and the changes he has made. But his third appearance. Breslow is two innings, and he's just going to be a one-inning guy. Non-roster invitee. And we'll find it out. Breslow had some other offers, maybe some other clubs, but felt that his best chances was maybe to make this club here the Minnesota Twins. And put himself in a good position and that Breslow is one of those guys that takes care of himself stays in shape Breslow is a veteran like Vogelson 39 Breslow 36 eight years in the big leagues spent some time with the Minnesota Twins back in 2008 then with San Diego Oakland Boston last year with Miami and pitches and that's in there for a strike switch inning Justin smoke and Breslow out of the stretch tapper down the third baseline that's going to go just foul But last year with Miami, Breslow kind of 0 2, 4 5 0 ERA in just 15 ball games. Spent some time also in the minor leagues. Big year with Boston 2014. Breslow, 0 2 pitch. And a dirt blocked by Castro. Three to one Minnesota. Top of the fifth inning. Pretty quiet crowd right now. And a one two. Went off speed and missed. Bres Breslow is going to be a crafty left hander. I think that he's never really had that power arm. And a two two. Strike three boy. Got the call there by Castro and that Castro didn't even think it was a strike. He started to throw the ball back, but he gets the strikeout. Three up, three down. Twins coming to bat in the bottom of the fifth inning. It'll be Mauer, Sano, Kepler. They lead three to one on your home for Twins baseball.
Well, here's Joe Maurer to lead off the bottom half of the fifth inning. Twins up three to one. And a first pitch from Leon to Maurer is low ball one. Joe strike out and a ground out. Joe's DHing here today, just a second game. And most likely get some more time. Earlier, Joe was wearing some sunglasses, and we made a point that he was experimenting with that last year in day games. And here, this at bat, no, I don't want to say sunglasses because they're more of a clear type glass with a rose color. But no sunglasses right now. And a 2 0. And missed outside. Well, Sano had the green light, 3 0, hit a two run bomb. See if Joe's going to track one here. Three balls and no strikes. And right down Broadway, there's a strike. Like a little cutter. Leon out of the stretch. Nobody on. His preference. And a 3-1 to Maurer. Tap her off his foot. That's going to hurt. Some big league experience, first round pick. Of course, everybody knows that. 13 years in the big leagues. I believe this is his 14th big league spring training down here in Fort Myers. Bats with a count of three balls and two strikes. And a pitch, one a missed. So Leon picks up a strikeout. It was a nasty pitch. Down and in. And all slide open stance. Couple of hits here this afternoon. Single to the right field side. And skies this one to left field. Hit high, playable. By the left fielder still now fighting that wind a little bit. Now comes running in. Listen, no, just got underneath that one. Listen, oh, a good line yesterday after the Twins and Blue Jays completed their game. Jose Barrios worked in back of Trevor May yesterday and Jose Brios was asked in a sarcastic manner, hey, could you strike out Miguel Sano before Brios could even answer? Sano said, everybody could strike me out right now. You can see why. After 10 at-bats, he struck out seven times, but two out of three today. You can't get too, wor too worked up over 10 at-bats. I think that, uh, you know, you get to that 25-at-bat mark, you should be able to start settling a little bit and seeing some progress, hopefully. Kepler bats. First pitch outside, ball one. This one tapped off home plate. That's going to go foul. Well, you, you see it every year, don't you, with a few guys, some spring trainings, and we're talking about veteran players, not guys fighting for spots on the team mm -hmm. to be a fourth outfielder or a bench player, where your starters, some have good springs and terrible starts to the season. Yep. And conversely, they'll just have a struggle throughout camp, but then the regular season begins, the lights come on, and, and here they go. Count of one and one to Kepler. And check swing at a ball in the dirt. He did go around. So there's strike two. You know, you make a good point, Corey, and that is, yeah, you know who the veterans are. Sano's going to be third baseman. He's going to get some at-bats, though. They want to make sure that he gets enough at-bats. Same with the outfield in Rosario and Buxton and Kepler. You want some at-bats. But it's the guys that are battling for those other roles, the bench roles. They're going to get a lot of playing time. Swing on a miss. Boy, fooled there badly by... Kepler, so a couple of strikeouts, three up, three down, five in the books here at Central League Sports Complex. Twins up three to one. We'll be back. You're listening to Twins Baseball.
That changes for the Minnesota Twins. Mitch Garver is the new Twins catcher. Adrianza is the Ahar. Adrianza is the new third baseman. Angel Volima is the new second baseman. Jack Granite out in right field. Drew Stubbs will take over for Byron Buxton. He's going to be in center field. And the new pitcher is going to be Alberto Mejia, left-hander. And he delivers a pitch in there for a strike. Adrianza in at third on the grass, and this one's fouled straight back. Big cut. Cesliani, the left fielder, his third at bat. He has one hit. Two trips to the plate. Mejia, they've got him listed 23 years of age. 2-10. And most likely going to be starting somewhere. And this was popped up right behind the net. All right, we're going to go down the dugout. We got Joe Maurer down there. Hey, Joe, thanks for stopping by. How's it going this afternoon? Um, well, a little frustrated there in my last at bat, but, um, you know, it's still early in spring and uh, just trying to get some timing down. <laughs> uh, that's what all it is. That's what hitting's all about is timing. But yeah. let me ask you when, you, when you talked about that last at bat, last pitch, I notice sometimes you'll walk back and we all have kind of turn around and maybe ask the umpire, good pitch or was the ball out of the zone? Is that kind of the conversation? Yeah, just ask him if it was on the plate. And um, you know, he said it was close. He said it might have been a little off. But um, you know, especially I like to ask a lot of questions down here just to uh, get a feel for the zone and, um, you know, try to uh, get that all locked in before April 3rd. Now pitch inside and now all of a sudden a count of three balls and two strikes. Twins leading three to one. Joe Maurer joins us in the dugout. DHing today was that. Does he come to you and ask you, do you want to play some some defense, or would you rather just get the at bats? This one's um, skied up. Hang on, Joe, please. And Garver, the catcher, ooh. boy, he makes that one look easy, doesn't he? Yeah, it's high sky today. High sky, <laughs> and don't forget the wind's blowing too. That's, uh, do you, that's do a nice you miss? Play. Do you miss that drill when they would do it in spring training, and they seem to pick the windiest day to practice it? Well, you, you, you hope for clouds, you need some cloud <laughs> cover to give you a little more depth perception. But uh, today, there's there's not too many in the sky today, so that that was a good nice play. You know, Joe, Danny brought this up earlier in the game, and a big topic involving you at this time last year, sunglasses on, on days like today. W where are you at with that? Are you, are you settled on wearing them again this season when it comes to day games? Um, oh, coming in. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm not settled uh, either way. I think, uh, you know, certain days, uh, I think it makes sense. Um, you know, I had a couple on. Uh, I think I had them on my first uh, couple at bats, but, um, you know, with the clouds moving in and out, um, you know, I, I decided to go without him that last one. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's not uh, something that's set in stone. Is, is it still a learning curve? Because I know that, uh, you know, some people like to wear different color. I thought you had a rose colored on. Is there different colored glasses that you can actually work with that maybe in day games yeah, helps you better? Yeah, you know, I, I think, um, you know, I kind of played around with them a lot last year. And um, for me, I think it's uh, kind of the amber tint uh, seems to, to do pretty well. You know, now how dark of amber tint there is. Uh, you know, that's that's what we'll try out but uh, those seem to go work pretty well kind of one ball and two strikes one out three to one Minnesota Mejia the left-hander delivers in a jam shot that one slipped it foul two balls and two strikes hey Joe I've been asking some of the pitchers this question but I'm just curious to get your take being a former catcher and a guy that's been around on this team for a long time with Jason Castro a new twin what impact can a new catcher have directly and right away with, with the new staff well it's huge you know um, Jason's got a, a lot to uh, a lot of uh, things to cover this camp you know um, as a catcher for my, myself I mean you try to learn uh, the personalities of guys along with their stuff you know what what do they react to what do they respond to in, in certain situations so um, he's uh, he's trying to soak in as much information as he can uh, you know this month and uh, you know be ready for uh, for the you know for the season but um, yeah he's got a lot on his plate but um, you know he's he's doing great and uh, you can already see that the respect uh, a lot of these guys are giving him kind of two balls two strikes on a pitch inside to Alfred you know and I think we experienced that last year when Murphy came into camp and remember he was trying to get, figure out all the pitchers and he kind of abandoned the offensive part of the game and that's got to be tough for a catcher to come to a new organization it is you know um, you got to learn that whole staff and like I said what they respond to so 
Um, this guy's got a lot on their plates, but uh, you know, Jason, uh, you know, he's handling it like a true pro, and um, you know, he's doing really well. You know, and it's tough because you know, you can catch him in the bullpen all you want. You can see what they yeah. feature, but you want to be able to get in game situations that are going to matter to where what you're going to throw. Absolutely, you know, and like you said, I mean, once you step between those lines, it changes a little bit. But um, you know, for me, like I said, you, you try to get a couple uh, keywords, and you know, you, you talk to guys and what they're comfortable with, and. Um, like I said, they're uh, they're doing really well. I believe this is Diaz batting right now for Toronto. Two down, bases empty. And I wanted to ask you, a lot's been talked about uh, Polanco and his throws over to first base. As a first baseman, you can always tell by that ball when it comes in. Who's got the good arm? Who's got a little bit of a softer arm or it tails? How does he get that ball? It, does he got good backspin on it when he gets it across the diamond? He does. He's, he's got a nice, strong arm, you know. Um, He's, uh, he's got a ball that carries a little bit. Uh, Sano, the same way, just like Trevor Plouffe. You know, those guys uh, had some carry on their ball, but um, would yeah, you he's, he's, would he's got a good arm out there at Would you say then that Dozier's kind of is a little fluffier, and then but it gets there in time? Well, I'd say he's, I mean, Dozier used to be a shortstop too. I mean, he could definitely uh, move over there if we need him, but um, yeah, I mean, he's he's got kind of from different angles and, and things like that, but um, you know, those guys on, the, uh, on that side of the infield it can get it over there pretty good. Count of two balls and a strike, two down. But he uh, delivers. Definitely, I definitely don't want to say Dozier's got a fluff arm. I did. Uh, 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 he's about as good as it gets over there, for the record. So. I, 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 I'm not saying he's got a fluff arm. I'm yeah. just telling you, you, you're talking about the left side of the diamond there with Sano yeah. and Polanco, and you said above average arms. Yes. Yeah, you know, they, they both uh, can get the ball over there. Um, yeah, I think Polanco could play any one of those uh, positions there. He's, he's that good, and... Um, yeah, I'm excited to see him, uh, you know, play shortstop. A good vibe in the clubhouse right now. I know it's early, but, yeah. uh, you know, talking to Trevor May and we had Urban Santana, but they just feel that there's a different different vibe with these guys. Yeah, you know, if there's uh, a lot of the same guys, but um, there's also, uh, we brought in some great people. You know, the guy that just caught the ball, Drew Stubbs and Chuck and Vogel song you just saw I and Breslow. I mean, we brought in some quality guys, you know, some guys that have been there and and uh, have some rings as well. So it's it's good. All right, Joe, appreciate your time. Thanks, Joe. All right, thanks, guys. And Danny, congratulations. Hey, thanks. Yeah, how about I that? Very that? nice. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Grandpa Dan, thanks a lot. I appreciate right. that, Joe. No problem. Three up, three down, going to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Coming to bat, be Vargas, Polanco, Castro. And Twins up three to one. You're listening to Twins Baseball. Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by Gertens. Gertens. It's only natural to buy from the grower. The puck drops for a hockey doubleheader Sunday on Fox Sports North. And it'll be Kenny Vargas leading off for the Twins up three to one. We start the bottom half of the sixth inning. Vargas this afternoon a walk. He had a ground out RBI drove in the first run for the Twins. Pulls this one down the right field line. Fielding Colbert got turned around. Took him a little while, but he ends up calling it foul. 
Hey, don't plan out the season. Flex it. With the flex plan, you're going to receive 20 tickets. can be used for any ball games you wish. You can also choose the ball games in advance right up to before first pitch. Flex plan members also are going to enjoy benefits of season ticket holders. To learn more, all you have to do is visit twinsbaseball.com slash flex. And a little number down the third baseline. Tough play by the third baseman. Fields it. Comes up throwing not in time. Boy, Vargas hustling down the line. They had a mini shift on, and he just squibbed it off the end of the bat. And we may get a pitch runner for Vargas. He's out of breath. The and we will. It's going to be Matt Haig running for Vargas. He's in that group that's going to leave here on Monday to join Team Puerto Rico. They're going to meet in Arizona. And then I believe they open up their first round in Mexico. With Hector Santiago, Jose Barrios, Eddie Rosario, Kenny Vargas in that group that will head west. Here's Polanco. Hits that ball to right field fairly well. Wynn's going to hold it up. And the right fielder, Oliveira, is going to put that one away. There's one out. Polanco sounded good when it left his bat. And Mitch Garver will get his first at bat here this afternoon. Pitcher for Toronto is Chris Smith. Had some time last year with the Oakland Athletics. Checks a runner, delivers, and missed outside. Was in Nashville as a starter. A's Triple A club got called up. Everything out of the bullpen. 13 appearances in the big leagues. Had a nice little 2.92 ERA. Fouled off to our right. And now one ball, one strike. Well, the Twins baseball is always brought to you by the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel. Find your island, find warm white sand beaches, and find the moments that always end too soon. But they become memories forever. Just visit FortMyersSanibel.com. And a pitch in the dirt blocked. With Haig at first base. Haig played in Japan last year. And there was a scout today that is with the, I want to say the Yakult Swallows that showed up today. And talking to him, he played over there for a couple of years. I forget the scout's name. But looking for players always. Ground ball down the third baseline. Hits off the bag. And that's going to carry him down the left field line. That's going to be for extra bases. So Garver with a one-out double. Twitch threatening to add on here. Second and third. Uh, Hank played for the Hounsheen Tigers, runner at third base. Didn't get a lot of playing time, just 104 at bats. Hit just two home runs. There's JB Shuck. And I asked Matt about that before recent game down here. And you know, I think he was being professionally correct and saying that I just played when I was told to play. It wasn't, at least he didn't tell me that yeah, I was promised more playing time and I was disappointed. He just said, yep, I just played when I was told to. And, that's how it went. Here's Shock to bat, and he fouls this one straight back. Toronto's playing the infield back with one out. Anything on the ground, shortstop, second base, right side of the diamond. Egg should be able to score. Some former twins are now playing in Korea. Pat Dean's going to be pitching on a Korean team this year. Scott Diamond is also pitching in Korea. And got the inside. Corner shucked in like that, kind of jackknife back out of the way. Having not played in Korea, we've had some Korean players when I was over there in Japan, but they tell me that the ballparks are a lot smaller and the baseball's a little bit smaller, too. Line drive right field, that might get over the head of the right fielder. He's going to back up, reach up, makes the catch. So Hegg's going to tag from third. So J.B. Shuck on a no ball, two strike count. Battles a good at bat. It's a sack fly. 
Picks up an RBI. Twins now lead four to one. And Drew Stubbs will get his first at bat. Stubbs battling for a job on this Twins roster as an extra outfielder. He can play all outfield positions, but probably best position is in center field. And lifted foul to our right side. Stubbs was quite the player when he came up with the Cincinnati Reds. He put up some good numbers for Dusty Baker, the manager there. Strike on the outside corner. Good fastball from Smith. You look at Stubbs, some home runs too. He had 22 home runs, drove in 77 runs. 2010 with Cincinnati. Pops this one up right side. First baseman in now foul territory. Now near the railing, and gonna wind's gonna take this into the seats. But that year he hit 22, drove in 77. He also stole 30 bases that year. So there's a threat that the twins would like to have coming off the bench. Somebody that could maybe have some power. It's been a while since Stubbs has had a 20 homer season. But the following year, he backed that up with 40 stolen bases. But most likely going to get a job here as a backup outfielder with the Twins. Bats here, no balls and two strikes. Curveball laid off, and it was low. 4 to 1 Minnesota. Toronto still out hitting Minnesota 7 to 6. And a pitch, strike 3, cut the inside corner and Stubbs throws his bat down. Twins will add one on a couple of hits they leave ones. After 6, new score. Twins up 4 to 1 on your home for Twins baseball. The seventh inning. Here's Corey Provis. All right, Danny, thank you. Gregorio Petit leads off. Twins lead 4 1. And Alberto Mejia back out to pitch. And his first offering hits the outside corner. And a strike call went off speed at 80 miles per hour. Nothing and one. Changes here for the Twins. Daniel Palka is now in left. And the 1 0 on the way is at the knees. Strike called. 
Ron Petit. Slider there, one ball, one strike. Nick Gordon is now at short. And Mejia's 1 1 is outside, ball two. So let's kind of reset the entire defensive alignment right now for the Twins. It's Polka in left. Drew Stubbs in center, Zach Brandon in right. More after this 1 2 2 petite. Here it comes. A swing and a pop fly, twisting foul right side, and that will work its way foul. Nice catch by a fan. The glove today up near the berm, down the right side. Nice play. Ball and two strikes on Petit. And Alberto Mejia comes home with the pitch, and it's high, a fastball. The Twins infield. Matt Haig is now at first base. Still Vielma at second. Gordon takes over at short. Adrianza at third. And Mitch Garver doing the catching. And again, the 2 2 pitch, pop fly, foul again. Out of play. On Gratterall, the catcher is on deck. Thank Irvin Santana for joining us, Joe Maurer as well. And the 2 2 pitch chopped to third. This is Adrianza fielding about knee high. And a low throw dug out by Haig. There is on number one. Well, have the time of your life with the people who are most important to you or build new friendships by bringing a group out to Target Field. Groups of 25 can receive ticket discounts, and you can eliminate all those handling fees. Visit twinsbaseball.com slash groups or call 833-TWINS for more information. This is Gratterall the batter. Discounts available now. 833 twins or log on to twinsbaseball.com slash groups. Twins by three in the seventh. And Mejia's 1-0 pitch, a weak round ball, third base out of the mound. Mejia's got it falling backwards, and his throw is off target, pulling Haig off the bag. Haig backing up, though, picks it up, and he misfires towards second base, and Grotterall is safe there. So Mejia initially made a good play, but never set his feet. He did field the ball off the mound, third base side, but he was backpedaling, folks, towards the third base line itself. And his throw pulled Matt Haig off the bag at first into foul ground. But Haig was able to pick up the missed throw. Took a fortunate bounce off the Blue Jay dugout. Had a play at second base, but Haig's throw was off target. And Nick Gordon was there to receive it. If there's a better throw from Haig, they probably have Gratterall out at second. Or if Mejia he took a little more time, though the base runner was not running very well. So not knowing what kind of speed he has, he had more time to kind of plant, get his feet underneath them, and step and throw. So runner at second base after the error by Mejia. And this is Dalton Pompey batting. His fourth at bat today is 0 for 3. I always felt if you made that long road trip, you don't want two at-bats and then get out of the game. You'd rather, you're going to make this trip down here. Give me some four at-bats. Oh, the 1-0 pitch, fastball from Mejia is high. And Mitch Garver's going to call time. Oh, Blue Jays bring it down. Some guys who will be on the team. And Pompey in the mix to be in the outfield. Ryan Goins, utility player. Kendris Morales will be the DH. Justin Smoke at first base. Others... And hope to compete for playing time and compete for a roster spot. Well, Toronto's going to be a good team. We were talking about their second baseman. It always seems to be Travis. Hurt. Devin Travis. You know, it. if he could put, if he could stay healthy, the numbers I think he would put up would be impressive. Good ground ball foul. He was originally with the Tigers, and he came to Toronto for Anthony Ghost. Yeah, but it seems like whenever the Twins and Blue Jays have played in recent years, Travis has been out with an injury. Hit 300 last year, 101 ball games, 11 home runs, 50 driven in, but this is an offensive-minded team anyway.
And two balls and one strike on Pompey. Twins have a right-hander up in the bullpen. And Alberto Mejia came to the Twins last year from the Giants in the Eduardo Nunez trade. A leg kick and the 2-1. It's a strike call on a fastball, 2-2. Two and two. I think you mentioned this earlier. While a guy like Craig Breslow is competing to be a left-handed arm of the bullpen, but he is not that. He's a starter. If it's not with the Twins, then it's going to be at Rochester to begin the year. Yeah, and he's a guy that it has some durability and some length there. Big kid. And good mechanics for a big guy. The 2-2 pitch is swinging a pop fly off the end of the bat. Shallow left. This is going to be caught by Palkin. As Pompey was out in front. Off speed from Mejia. And there's the second out. And here comes a jogging Paul Molitor as he will make a pitching change. So Mejia will leave and the Twins will have a new pitcher and we will identify him when we come back. Twins four, Blue Jays one, Toronto batting. A man at second base, two outs. We're back to Fort Myers in a moment on your home for Twins baseball. Pitcher is Raul Fernandez, not a roster invite. Here in the camp, 6'2, 180 pounds, Dominican, 26 years old. Split time at Double A Chattanooga, and right here in Fort Myers last year. Power R, big time fastball, upper 90s. That's what this guy features. He comes in with two outs. The Twins lead four to one. Under second base. And Ryan Goins is the batter. Goins 0 for 2 with a walk. Might be a pinch runner at second base. I'm not sure if that's still Gratterall for Toronto as Fernandez misses down and inside. And that one briefly gets away from Garver at 94, ball one. Pitch on Goins is tapped foul. Got a piece of Garver. He's all right. One ball, one strike. Looks like it's 86. That is Gunner Heights. Maybe. That's who I put in my lineup right. card. And the 1-1 pitch, a fly ball into left near the line. This one hit well, sending Polka back at the wall. It's up, and that ball is going to work its way foul. It was close to a home run. In fact, the Toronto dugout thinks it was a home run. That was ruled foul. As it kept on traveling, it kept on slicing deep down the left field line. No replay during spring training. Uh, the coaches are down there kind of asking the third base umpire, like, you know, put the headset on. We want to go we'll go see this one. So even though this game is televised, still no replays used during spring training. A couple years ago, it might have been, what, 2013? I think the first ever replay happened here. I yes. think it was against Toronto, in fact. Yes. Not now in spring training. Not anymore. So it's a foul ball. One and two on Goins. 
And here's the pitch. Had the play missed low. Home Fernandez, two balls and two strikes. Off speed there from Raul. And the berm. Good place to be out at left field today. Towels. Suntan lotion. Enjoying this beautiful sunshine. The 2 2 and the dirt kicks away from Garver with that. Height advances to third base. Ohio pitch on Fernandez. And boy, was that an issue last year for the Twins as a team. It wasn't just starters, it wasn't just the bullpen, just a collective subpar number. The amount of wild pitches unleashed by the Twins in one year. An astonishing number last season. And the 3 2 pitch, a line drive, left center field, that ball slicing and dropping a base hit a run scores. Going strike for second base to throw to the bag, and the tag applied, and they got him. So Ryan Goins trying to stretch that into two. But the Twins able to throw him out at second base. It was Vialma applying the tag. The throw in from left hit the cutoff man at Gordon. And then maybe 10 feet away was his throw to second base. And Goins was tagged out trying to stretch that into a double. Still a run scores. It's unearned. And with that, the Blue Jays pull within two. We stretch in for Myers and now reads Twins four, Blue Jays two on your home for Twins baseball. Twins on top, 4-2, bottom seven. Toronto with a few changes. New pitcher is Chad Gerardo, a left-hander. Ninth round pick by the Blue Jays back in 2013. So Vielma is the hitter. Vielma now at second base defensively. And the 1-0 pitch is lifted to right down the line, and that's going to land for a base hit. Cut off in right field. Still Vielma trying for second base. The throw is not in time. It's a double. So leadoff double to right. Edward Oliveris, the right fielder, did cut that ball off long before the warning track, but Vielma thinking two all the way. And he has a headfirst sliding double to begin the seventh. As the Twins lead by two. Good piece of hitting right there going the other way, and Oliveris did bobble a little bit, and that was enough for him to kind of advance to second. Still a strong throw by the right fielder. This is going to bring up the DH spot and Robbie Grossman. Get into the bat here. And Robbie led the team last year in on base percentage around 385. After joining the club in May, as he takes a pitch inside for ball one. 
Danny Thad Levine the Twins GM joined us here on Wednesday and we brought up you know, Robbie's name and Drew Stubbs and even J.B. Shuck among those in competition to be on the team to be a fourth outfielder from the stretch and the 1 0 pitch is tapped foul up the third base line and my question to, to Thad was does last year give Robbie a leg up considering how well he played it is a new year but how much do you take into account what Robbie did as a twin the prior season he said it does it does make a difference and he just can't forget about what he did a year ago. Well, Robbie was so productive for the Twins last year. And, and you know, he was, I don't want to say, forced into a new role. He played a lot. But he's got the home run power. One, and one is a strike called. One and two on Grossman. Hit 11 and last year. Knocked in 37, 37 runs you know, in 99 and games. For kind of a 99 games. And well, that was a lot of playing time for Robbie. And I talked to him late in the season. He said he was having a tough time to wait. You know, as the season goes long tough to keep the weight on and the one two inside corner strike three call good pitch there from Gerardo and tied up Grossman so a strikeout cannot advance the Elma down to third so one away twins by two and this will bring up Eddie Adrianza the third baseman no Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine brings you twins baseball from aspiring youth athletes to the pros Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine will help you meet your sports performance goals. Call today to make your appointment at Mayo Clinic Square in Minneapolis. Here is Anna Adrianza, formerly with the Giants. Last four years was claimed off waivers by the Twins from Milwaukee just a few weeks ago. Adrianza competing for a utility spot. Play second, short, third. Runner takes off from second base as Adrianza sends one foul. So Vielma moving there. Adrianza swinging. He knocked it foul off the screen behind the plate. Well, you'd like that guy to maybe try to steal a little bit, uh, maybe a pitch sooner. But now with two strikes on Adrianza, he's got to protect. But I thought Vielma had a great jump. Nobody holding him near the bag at second. Zach granted on deck. Twins by two in the seventh. Toronto, the left-hander holds high. Comes home 0-2 in the dirt. Breaking ball blocked by the new catcher. And that is Reese McGuire doing the catching. Jonathan Diaz goes from third to short. And Gunner Height stays in and takes over at third base. Ball and two strikes on Adrianza as Toronto spins off and stares Vielma back to second. No throw made. Twins scored one in the second on a Vargas RBI ground out of the two more in the third on a Miguel Sano long home run to left center. And the one two pitch is swinging a fly ball into right center field. It's playable. Until Laveras to his right, he will catch it. Vielma tagging. He's going to try for third base. Here's the throw. A good throw, and Vielma's just safe. It was awfully close, but a heck of an arm in right field from Oliveras, but Vioma tested that arm and feet first sliding in safely into third, but that was awfully close. So two outs, and it's up to Granite. Yeah, throw to height. Just slightly off line. Pulled the third baseman towards the left field line. If that's directly at the base, the Elm is probably out. Just that slight little tail on that throw allowed the Elma to reach. As Granite takes down low for a ball. Zach has had a nice spring so far. In the playing time, he's come up with some good at bats and put the ball in play. Last year's minor league player of the year. And the 1 0 showing bunt for the back and strike is called. Now Zach joined us a couple days back and talked about a, a kid in his first big league camp. He's on the 40 man roster. He has been soaking up the information, soaking up the experience, not taking this for granted one bit. And the 1 1, he bunts again and it goes foul. I don't mind that, Danny, and that, that's a part of his game. He's fast, and he can butt well. Uh, 
Jason Kipnis will do this with the Indians. He'll bunt with two outs and a guy at third base. You don't see it too often. No, though. it's a heads-up play, very smart play. And like you said, he's got great speed, gets it down anywhere because third baseman is way back, as is the first baseman. So if he can get it just down in either area, either the third base side or the first base side with his speed. Now two strikes and the one two he swings and chops one to the right side. This is Goins fielding chest on. He throws out Granite. Made that somewhat close. Still an out nonetheless. And with that, the inning is over. Twins do not cash in the leadoff double. They leave one after seven. Twins four, Toronto two. From Fort Myers, this is Twins Baseball. Welcome back. Twins 4, Toronto 2. T.C. Bear having a good time today. There's the super soaker in hand. Squirting some Blue Jay fans behind the Toronto dugout. They like today. I bet they don't mind. They welcome that. John Birdie is the batter for Toronto. This will be his first late appearance today. Batting in the D.H. spot. Now vacated by Morales. The pitcher is Matt Belisle. Twins by two in the eighth. As Birdie steps off as Belisle works here in the eighth inning. 36-year-old Texan. 6'3", 230. He'll be on the team. Barring any injury. And a 1-0. There's a strike call. The Twins bullpen can't really say there are too many locks, but Belisle is one of them. Had a solid year with Washington last year. Been around. Normally with the Reds and Rockies, Cardinals for a year, Washington last year, a 176 ERA in 40 games. Spins in a breaking ball there, one and two now on Birdie. That is wearing number nine. On the stretch and the one two is bounce foul. Just the second twin ever to pitch and have a single digit uniform number. Pat Mahomes, the other, wore number five back in 1996. Belial wore number nine in high school, Little League. And the one-two foul back, fastball up and inside on John Birdie, 92, that offering for Matt. Please report to the guest services booth. Well, Justin Smoke still in this game. He's going to bat next. His fourth plate appearance. Righty to righty. And Belisle's one-two pitch. Ground ball back to Matt. He's got it right on top of the mound. He fires a fastball to first. No lob of that arm from Belisle. Right, Birdie is out number one. Well, twin spring training baseball is always live with the MLB.com at bat mobile app. 
Stay connected all spring with radio broadcasts, stats, video highlights, news, and more. Download MLB at bat today. It's your number one app for live baseball. Here's Justin Smoke, one for three. Switch hitting first baseman, takes down an inside ball one. A couple days in between broadcasts, but some birthdays to acknowledge. Glenn Perkins had a birthday the other day. And a 1 0 is tapped foul as Bilal came inside on Smoke. The Duke celebrated a birthday. Dick Bramer on March 1. I'm sure, the Duke is uh, tuning in right now at his palatial state. Back home in Minnesota. Last time we heard from him, he was texting us from the garage, wasn't he? Right. Better known as the doghouse. I wonder if he finally got out of that. And one is outside, ball two. My daughter's birthday, Whitney, celebrated March 1st. Same day as your new grandchild, right? Day before, no, day before. Yep. Foul back, two and two. So February 28th, grandson's birthday, Whitney, March 1. Mm -hmm. Two and two on Smoke. Let's have the shortstop Gordon right up the middle. Swing and a miss. Got him. Good pitch there from Belisle. It was down and away. At 92, and Smoke is out number two. Oh, he came right after him there. A little sneaky fastball got him by him. Mentioned a few times how Belisle is a veteran. And that was something that was lacking in the second half of last season. Yeah, because of injury, because of performance, how young the Twins' bullpen was. And not just age, but just Major League experience. The last, I'd say, six, seven, maybe even eight weeks of the season, which is inside, kicks off the shoe of the umpire, the cleat. Well, maybe the cleat of Garver, if not, then the shoe of the home plate umpire, but everybody's all right, ball one. But they're hoping that that will change here this year, that Bilal could be kind of a reliable and a steadying presence in the bullpen with the youth that the twins still have in that pen strike called on Dwight Smith one and one well, Blyle was out here first week of spring training and he was doing some extra work out here with Perry and they were doing some sprunting and usually you don't see that too often at least on the field one one breaking ball Smith not close one and two but yeah he's a mature veteran here he, he's been with some other ball clubs and He's been in some good clubhouses, so I don't think this is uh, strange for him to be able to come in with a new club and make his presence felt right away. Base is empty, two outs, one and two on Dwight Smith. Well, here it comes, and it's inside. Here are the hands of check swing. The appeal did not go. Urban Santana started today as second grapefruit league start. He went three scoreless inning, five hits, struck out one, walked one. And the 2-2 two -two outside and low ball three. Fastball, 92 on the radar gun. Santana induced two double plays. Twins seeking their fourth win. Three and two on Smith with two outs. And the payoff. Ground ball right side. And it scoots right by Vielma into right. Hit hard, but Vielma went down to his left and could not knock it down. As it got by the slick fielding infielder. Not there. And Smith is on. Yeah, that's a play you want to see your second baseman make, even though that was hit hard, but it was just. Just a step or two to his left, and he elected to kind of field that ball on the side. I'm going to go E4. Yeah, I'm with you. It's interesting looking at the defense right now. Gordon at short, Vielma at second base. Those two could very well be a double A together. And you may see Vielma play short and Gordon play second base. We're flip-flopping as they are right now. Edward Oliveras, the right fielder. Will bat as he chops one past the mound near short. This is Gordon to his left. He's got it. Nice flip. 
two Vielma covering the bag at second for the force on Smith to end the inning. Blue Jays don't score. Twins commit an error, and Toronto leaves one. After seven and a half, now in Fort Myers, Twins still lead 4-2 on your home for Twins baseball. Ball. Twins on top 4-2, home half of the eighth inning on a windy but sunny and warm day here in Fort Myers. We thank you for joining us both on the Treasure Island Baseball Network and for simulcast of the spring, Fox Sports North. Also those tuning in on the MLB Network here today, Matt Haig. We referenced his name earlier, played in Japan last year. As he bats in the eighth and behind a strike call, 0-1. That's got some big league time with the Pirates. The pitcher for Toronto and the 0-1 is on the inside corner for a strike. And the new pitcher is Lionel Campos. Some other changes. Matt Dean is now at first. And a new shortstop as well. We'll get his name momentarily. 0 and 2 on Haig. And here's the pitch. It's low and inside. Ball one. I believe the shortstop is now Yetzin Guadino. Campos off the first base out of the rubber. Leg kick and deals one two and Haig strikes out swinging. Sinker down and in on Haig. And there is the first out. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Minnesota Twins. Here is Nick Gordon. Former first round pick. As he bangs one up the middle and through into center a hit. There's a strength that Gordon possesses. He can hit. And see over time where he ends up. Is he going to be a shortstop? Is he going to play some second base? Time will tell, but he has a good bat. Yeah, also, you know, Corey Speed, and we talk about a lot of guys are going to be running. Paul has said that he's going to have more guys run on their own now. And plus, Paul's going to give the sign. He's going to give the steal sign a little bit more this year. I think that he wants to try to incorporate the speed that he has in this club. 
We'll check on Gordon last year. Gordon played here in Fort Myers. And he stole 19 bases on base percentage, close to 340, hit 291. And it could begin at double A. Chattanooga, we'll see how that all plays out as we move along here in March. Mitch Garver is the batter. And with one out, Mitch takes inside for a ball. And Garver, he just put together a fine 2016. Chattanooga, Rochester. Mitch now 26 years old, ninth round pick in 2013. Was added to the 40 man roster this offseason. On the stretch and the 1 0 on Garver's at the knees, first strike call. You know, Corey, and I think that they're going to look at Garver real hard as to possibly because you're looking for that backup catcher. And Garver, like you said, on the 40 man roster. So if he is going to be weaned in, uh, I think that they could keep him as a backup catcher and get some playing time, some big experience playing behind Castro and being on the club. That's the one one to check swing. He went no appeal made that call made behind the plate one and two. That's that's going to be part of the conversation is, is Garver better off being the everyday catcher down at triple A or being the guy that will spell Castro from time to time with the twins. But wouldn't you say though the Castro signing the three year deal. He's the guy that's going to be catching the majority right. of the games 100 right. games. So why not have a Garver as your backup because you know if he's not going to be an everyday guy for three years which is down low two and two. And Garver's been of the fall league back to back years and offense was always a plus for yep. Mitch when he was drafted he knew that the defense really came around and it's really something to bring up and maybe we can have Jeff Smith who's new to the staff mm -hmm. former manager in the Twins minor league system including here in Fort Myers join us because you know people that that saw Mitch in 2015 when he was here in Fort Myers they kind of say that Jeff Smith had a lot to do with that that, that Jeff was really big on Mitch's improvement defensively as a catcher. Runner goes the 2 2 is outside throw to second base and Gordon safe. <laughs> McGuire the catcher fired that one from his knees but Gordon swipes second base moves himself in his scoring position and now it's full on Garver 3 2. Corey if you look in the past the twins have always had their backup catcher in, in Butera as a defensive specialist nothing not much offensively. Centeno last year more of a catch and throw guy not much of a bat. And I think now they're kind of getting away from that whereas the backup catcher maybe look to get more offense out of him rather than the the defensive part of it. And the three two is in the dirt ball four. this one bounces off the chest pad of McGuire and alertly Gordon takes third heads up base running all around there from Gordon. It was in the dirt and McGuire blocked it kicked out in front of the catcher. Towards the grass out in front of home plate, but Gordon took off, and now he's at third. It's like that. Coaching staff watching. They will make notes, and in this game, Gordon doing the right things in the base pass right now. Stolen base and takes third in the wild pitch. Well, that's taught in this organization. They go on that small field, and the catchers, it's a great drill. Catchers are working on blocking the balls, and they have the base runners running the bases, and they're working on reading the ball in the dirt. Daniel Polka. Big time power last year as he floats one deep to left down the line. That ball slicing, slicing and going foul. Polka led the Twins last year in home runs throughout the organization. And if not for Zach Granite, Polka probably the Twins minor league player of the year. And like Granite, Garver, Polka added the 40 man. This offseason. Unlike the prior offseason where the Twins added, I want to say seven guys and six were, were pitchers, it was more balanced looking at the six that were added to the 40 man this year. 0 and 1 on Polka. First and third, one out. In the eighth, Twins by two. A swing and a foul. And the catcher, McGuire, hangs onto it. The Twins added six guys to their 40 man. And only two pitchers. Fernando Romero, Felix Jorge, pitchers, position players, Polka, Vielma, Garver, and Granite. 0 and 2 on Daniel. No batting gloves, left handed slugger. And the 0 2 got him swinging. Good pitch in the dirt. And Polka not make contact. And that 87 mile per hour pitch that was in the dirt, nasty. 
So it's a strikeout, two outs. And it's going to be up to Drew Stubbs. Another thought, too, on, on the Twins' backup catcher. And this was interesting. Thad Levine joined us on Wednesday. And it doesn't look to be this case now, but it could morph into this, where as, as you just play out games down here, and if a certain pitcher becomes comfortable with a certain catcher, and that relationship forms, that may be something we see. Stubbs bangs one deep to right field. Oliveras back, twisting, turning, can't make the play. Hits the grass. Gordon scores. Racing around third is Garver. He's going to try to score. Here's the throw, not in time. Stubbs knocks in two. Garver scores. Gordon scores. And the Twins lead 6 2 in the eighth. Oliveras twisting and turning the win. Playing havoc with that ball somewhat. Hit the grass not far from the outfielder. When Garver never stopped running. Gene Glenn had that arm moving the entire time. Well, Oliveras, it took a long time getting that ball back into the infield and watching it. It looked like that ball checked up on him. It actually went inside of his jersey. Mm. So he had to sit there and take his time and reach in and pull that jersey, uh, the ball out. So here is Vielma batting. Twins by four now in the eighth. And Stubbs comes through with two outs and knocks in two. Just to finish up that thought, you know, we brought up the name Chris Jimenez, who's in camp competing for a backup spot. And then I brought this up with Thad, that if you go back to Jimenez last year, he became Trevor Bauer's personal catcher there for a while. And I'm not saying that Jimenez has a guy that he is certainly going to be locked in with, but if, if things kind of work out that way, the Twins may go down that path as they, as they examine who that backup catcher may turn out to be. Ball two on Bielma. Well, I'm not sure if a guy makes a club just because he wants a personal catcher. I think that, uh, you know, you got to look at some skill level. And that, that, what are they looking for from their backup catcher? Are you looking for a guy that can catch and throw? Or are you looking for a guy that can is average at catching and throwing, but there's more of an upside with his offense? Two balls and no strikes. On Vielma. As Angel steps out wearing number one. That's a, that's a great point. What what it also maybe factors into what your bench is going to look like yes. as a team. Yep. You you want to have some type of speed on the bench. You got to have a speed guy that can play multiple positions. In the dirt and was blocked again by McGuire. He's been busy this half inning. 3-0. And, and, and you look at it, you've got Stubbs at second. He's got good speed. You've got J.B. Shock that I think not really a base stealer, but he runs fairly well. And then you've got Robbie Grossman, that not the speed, but more of the power type guy, switch hitter. And then you've got Danny Santana, who's probably the truest guy that can come off the bench and actually steal a base for you. Now the 3-0 pitch, and that's a get me over knee high strike call. Danny Santana's out of options. Robbie Grossman out of options. So it's just a matter of sitting down with your coaching staff and everybody saying, okay, how do you want to put this team together? And does somebody have an option? You'd mentioned Danny Santana does not. Stubbs, JB Shuck, they're not even on the 40-man roster. 3-1 pitch is cued to left shallow, charging is Smith, charging, charging, and catching. Cap high. Inning over to the Twins had two big runs a two out two run double from Drew Stubbs and after eight it now reads Twins six Blue Jays two on your home for Twins baseball.
Twins are three outs away from their fourth. The Grapefruit League win down here, leading Toronto 6 to 2. New pitcher is Ryan Presley. He'll be a part of the Twins' bullpen again this season. Last year set a career high with 72 appearances, also a career best 67 strikeouts for the right hander as he comes home with a fastball strike called. And it's 0 and 1. I believe the batter is Yeltsin Guadino. His first plate appearance today. Presley 6 3, 210. And here's the pitch. His pop foul out of play right side. And Presley displayed some power last year out of the bullpen, mid 90s. Once in a while, a titch higher for Ryan last year. No balls and two strikes on Guadino. Leg kick, and here's the pitch. Ground ball chopped to first. Nicely played by Haig. Two steps to the base, and he makes the play unassisted for out number one. You know, they thought about Presley here. Kinsler looks like to start the season. If Perkins is not healthy, Kinsler most likely be that the closer. But you have a good guy here in Presley, and depending on how much Kinsler gets to use they feel that Presley has closer stuff so one out for the catcher Reese McGuire as Presley misses down low ball one and Presley's been a guy the twins have gone to often the last couple of years he has led the twins in appearances since 2015 99 the last two seasons and the 1-0 pitch is high. Two balls and no strikes. He's come a long way yeah, since we saw him in camp. Rule 5 in 2013. He's just more mature. He's stronger. And Presley's 2-0 pitch. There's a thigh-high fastball strike called on McGuire. 94 on the radar gun. Yeah, we've seen this kid here mature into a pretty good baseball player. Remember the first year he came over here, made this club, and kind of used sparingly a little bit. He's not afraid to pitch inside. Nope. And the 2-1 is tapped foul off the foot of the batter McGuire, 2-2. Two and two. And he, he, he likes the big stage, too. Yes, he, he does. He's, if he's given the chance, Danny, whether it's the eighth inning, ninth inning, seventh inning, to get a big out, he wants the ball. Yeah, he, he's got an attitude now, I think, that it shows out on the mound there. And, you know, the players are learning a little bit about Presley and how tough of a pitcher he is. Two and two on McGuire here in the ninth inning. And here's the pitch. Swag and a miss and a foul. Beg your pardon. Hit the ground. Garver could not hang on to it. Two and two. Slider right there, 85, down yeah, and in. And he's got two plus pitches, and that's why I think that, you know, he could slide into that, that closer's role because he's got that power breaking ball. And then he's got a plus fastball, and he locates both of them. Two balls and two strikes on McGuire. And the pitch outside shot the corner and missed away. Ball three, 95. On the reading on that fastball, it's not just a simple four seamer either. Mm -hmm. that, that that moves a little bit. And he's got that, again good location. He could command his pitches and just try to run it off the corner of the plate, try to get this guy to chase it a little bit. So and Presley does go for the strikeouts. He's a guy that likes strikeouts. The 3 2 breaking ball pulled foul into the berm down the right side. Look out, folks. We get some folks scattering around a little bit. Hey, a sellout today. First one we've had this year, 8,305. Twins have a road game tomorrow. They will travel across the state, take on the Nationals in West Palm. And we're back with you here on Monday. 3-2. Got him swinging. Blew it by him. 97 on that fastball offering from Ryan Presley. So two outs. 
Well, it's going to be Gunner Height batting, the last hope for Toronto. We're here Monday, another simulcast. We will join you at noon Central Time. Six two twins, two down. This is Gunner Height. Swing and a miss, nearly fell down. And after waving and missing at that slider, stumbled across the plate. And impressively kept his feet. Took a big cut. One step, two step, put the right hand down to keep his balance. Sometimes that swing like that won't sit well sometimes with some veteran players. At the same time, see if he comes right back, see him swing out of his shoes again. No balls at one strike on height. And here's the pitch, it's low. Good day for Miguel Sano. A couple of hits, a home run. Scored twice, knocked in two. Max Kepler, two doubles today. Kenny Vargas with an RBI. He was on base a couple of times. Drew Stubbs, the big hit in the eighth inning. A two-out, two-run double. And a 1-1 inside corner strike, two. And the Blue Jays are down to their last strike. Now the one two in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. Twins use Irvin Santana today. Ryan Vogel song inning and two thirds a run. Craig Breslow face one man. Mejia inning and two thirds scoreless. Hernandez one third of an inning. Matt Belial and now Ryan Presley. And the 2-2. Ground ball right side. Vielma's got it. He gloves. He throws. And this one is over. The Twins beat Toronto 6-2. To the Twins now 4-4-1. Four, four the Blue Jays fall to 2-6-1. and one. Back with some thoughts from Danny next on your home.